Hey everyone, welcome to Pete's Garage. Well, we're going to continue on building our 440 by installing our cam and setting the timing. Uh, now, if it's your first time visiting the channel, please hit subscribe so you can follow along with this video series and like my Facebook page so you can get uh, pictures and updates on the projects as I work along. Now, we're going to put the camshaft in, but first we're going to look at the cam card and we have to set the, the uh, number one cylinder to top dead center. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the engine over by hand and as the piston comes up, I'm going to watch my dial indicator. I have this dial indicator with a magnetic base here. And I want to turn this until the needle goes around, stops, and starts to go backwards. So, turn this. It's going to, it's going to get really close. All right, stop. Okay, it started to turn backwards. Now, I'm going to take my zero degrees and put it right on that zero as close as I can and now I'm going to go backwards see how I got it close to it's within a thousand so I'm going to go back a little bit right there so I'll put that right on the zero mark and I'll try and move it again it should go down okay I'm at top dead center so the zero is right at top dead center right there okay right top dead center all right here's the cam card for the cam we're putting in it's a com cams cam standard part number and this and this gives us you have a serial number here and it's a standard grind I didn't need anything special on this I just bought a standard grind for this for this engine and here's the part number now here's the uh, information that we're going to focus on the uh, valve adjustment first of all it's a hydraulic cam so there's it's not there's no adjustments for the uh, flat tapped solid roll, solid cam. The gross lift they advertised 549 and 544 for the intake and exhaust, which is which is considerable. We need to get a lot of air in and a lot of air out in order to produce the horsepower we want to make here. Um, duration that's six six thousandths tappet lift 292 and 300. So that's the duration. If you look at the du difference between the the tappet lift duration at six thousandths and durations at fifty. You can see it, there's not much change, which means that this engine is going to have a pretty, pretty a cam, so to speak, cam idle. It's going to sound cammy, I guess you would say, which means it gets a little rougher than normal. Uh, valve timing at 50. You can see when the valves are going to open. Intake valve is going to open 15 degrees before top dead center and close 47 after bottom dead center. So that's that's just some information there. Uh, the other thing that's important here, this is a, the cam is installed at a 106 degree center line and we'll talk more about that when I degree the cam after we put the heads on and rest the valve train. And this is kind of the information here, someone's going to say, hey, what's your cam, what's the, uh, what is it at 50? You want to know at 50 thousandths lift, what is the intake and exhaust, the duration and the lobe lift. And you can see that it's, these are still, these numbers are, are fairly high, lobe separation is 110 degrees. So. This indicates that the, the, it tells you what the idle is going to be like. So when the at, at 50, 50 thousandths, the, the lobe lift is still considerably high with this duration. They're going to be open long, so that's what causes that lopey sound in the cam. Again, uh, I always say whenever you're looking for a cam, people ask me all the time, what, help me pick a cam. Well, the cam is determined by the springs that you have in your head. So the springs are, are required for the uh, valve spring specs for what furnished with the springs. So you want to look at what, you, what springs you have in the head. That's going to determine what kind of cam you can really put in there. All right, now I'm ready to put my camshaft in. And if you'll notice, I only have lubrication on the journals of the cam or the bearing surfaces. I don't have any lube on the lobes, and there's a good reason for that. The reason is I'm using a roller lifter for this engine. And if I put lubrication, this type of lubrication, on the, the uh, lobe of the camshaft, when the roller, when I install the lifters, if the, it's too slippery, there's a good chance that that roller on there could skate, not roll. And if that happens, it's going to skate and it can cause a flat spot on your roller. So if you're building a roller engine and you're using this kind of engine lube, you don't want to put it on the lobes. Skating on the uh, lobe like that will cause it to give a flat spot and you'll ruin your lifters. So let me set that down. Now what I have handy, I do have my the lube handy because I'm going to drop it down the center uh, through the in, in the valley there when I get the cam near the uh, each one of the bearings. 
I have the front bearing loop, I have them looped throughout and I also have these big bolts in the front which make it easier to hold the cam and guide it in. Now this is a this is a, such a huge this is a controversial process because everyone says the block should be sitting on on the back and you should drop it in which which is where dropping the cam comes in from but at the factory cams are installed this way so if they can install it this way at the factory and I've been doing it this way ever since I've been building engines never had a problem you just have to be careful when you put this in that you don't nick any one of the bearings on the inside. So I'm looking on the inside and as I get close to each one of the bearings I'm going to stop. Let me just get this close. I'm going to stop. I'm just going to take some lube and drop it in just on top of the, the urinals for the, for the cam where the cam bearings are. So continue to go on very slow. And, and it just takes a little practice, but if you do it this way, it actually works fairly good. It takes a little bit of feel, but I'm not resting any of the lobes in the bearing. So, now I'm getting very close to the end here. So, I'm going to very gently get it almost to its final resting position. And just before I set it in place, I'm going to put a little lube on top of each one of the low cam, or I'm sorry, the cam bearing surfaces right on the cam. Just a little bit, not a lot. Now I can lift this up and very gently guide that in. I'm going to rotate it so that the lube I put on there spreads around the entire bearing. And there. Camshaft's installed, and I can take these bolts out. And uh, I'll just leave one in there. You can feel that the cam turns nice and smooth. So now we can put the timing chain on. All right, now installing the, the cam gear, a couple things to note here. The gear only has one direction it can go on there. On the back, there is this bearing which is a, a the bearing that it rides on like a thrust bearing and that goes against the block and the reason it goes against the block is because if you notice there isn't a cam retainer there's not a cam retainer bolt because on a big block with the rotation the way the distributor gear is set up the cam wants to thrust towards the back of the engine on small blocks like Ford's the, the cam wants to thrust forward so you gotta have a cam retainer plate you don't need that here. There are oil grooves on the bottom for oil to go to the back and this bearing on the back of the gear acts as your thrust bearing. There's only one way to do that. You line up the pin with the hole in the cam. Goes just like that. Now I'll be securing it with some ARP fasteners 3 8 bolts to go in here and then torquing those down after we get the timing chain on. And I always tell everyone, follow the manufacturer's recommendations. This is the sheet that comes with the bolts. These are 3 8 bolts, so it goes to 45 foot-pounds. We've got to put the chain on first. Now putting the timing chain on is a fairly simple process. And technically, if you do it this way, you don't really need to degree the cam, but we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> so, I've got my, my, my cam gear just kind of snugged in place and in order to get the timing right you got this timing dot on here and you can see I painted that in white just to make it easy to see and the gear that goes on the crankshaft has multiple keyways and with that keyway there's a number you see this one says 0 0 A2 A4 R2 R4 it means 0 degrees retard 2 degrees retard 4 degrees or advance and you can see on the outside of the gear here is where the timing dot is. That timing dot is zero. That zero corresponds to the zero degree uh, advance that lines up with the keyway in the crank. And it's important to notice now that we have the piston at top, number one piston at top dead center, the keyway is, is right here at around two o'clock when number one piston is at top dead center. So I want to stall this with the zero slot right on the keyway. And if I do that, you can see the timing dot 
is right on the top. Now, in order to put the chain on, of course I can't get it on there because it's so small, right? It's going to be tight. So what I have to do is, in order to get this on here, is I have to pull the cam out very gently, just far enough so that I can keep it lined, leave that dot lined up on the bottom. I'm going to take my chain and hang it over the cam like that. And I want to line up my dot on the outside with that dot there. So I'm going to line these up the best I can. You can see that those are kind of lined up. Now I'm going to lift up and I'll just put this down a little bit so you can see that what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that as I push the cam in gently the zero slot on the keyway is matched up with the key. My zero dot on the crank sprocket is at zero which matches my cam gear. Now when I slide the cam in very gently I will be able to slide both these on at the same time very gently it's going to be, be gentle, it should go right on it's tight so I just got to make sure that the cam is in there all the way, there we go And there we go. Cam's all the way back. The cam is touching the back, and my sprocket is all the way back. My zero degree mark is lined up with the zero degree mark on the cam sprocket. As long as those two line up, you're in good shape. Now I want to lubricate my chain, put some lube on the chain and in the gears. So I'm just going to put some lube on the outside of the chain here on the top to start out with a little bit. And I'll put some on the inside of the sprocket. And as I turn it, I'll just keep putting more in there. Just to make sure I get some all the way around that gear and all over the chain. Uh, if there's a dry spot, I'll just put some in there. And I'll do that until the timing chain comes all the way around. So at least the lubricated part comes back to where it left off. Just don't want any dry spots on that gear. Make sure it's all nice and good. So now I'm going to bring my number one cylinder back to top dead center, which it is right now, but the dots aren't here. It's 180 degrees out of phase. So I'm going to turn it until my white dot comes back. And red zero, zero, and number one is top dead center. I feel that. And the keyway is back at two o'clock. So we got that complete. Now I can torque down my uh, the bolts here for the cam sprocket, the cam gear. Now I can just torque to 45 foot pounds. Alright, that's complete. Now the only thing that's left is this cam button. This, this button goes on the inside here and what it does is it, in case the cam thrusts forward, this little roller bearing here, this rolls against the uh, front timing chain cover that way you don't have the bolts digging a hole through the timing chain cover, but it shouldn't move anyway. But there's a clearance that we set up for this and I won't I'll won't. i put this in when we talk about installing the timing chain cover. So there you have it guys, cams installed, everything's ready to roll. Next we'll be doing the valve train, lifters, push rods, we'll put the heads on, check our piston to valve clearance, set the lash for our hydraulic lifters, and then we'll be all set, we can put our cam cover on. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.